It's Wednesday evening, and it is the Mahoning and Shenango Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. We call it Weather for Weather Geeks, and this is Wednesday evening, the day before the 4th of July, and a lot of people have the day off and want to be outdoors. The forecast is a little bit of a tricky uh, uh, situation, and we'll talk about all of that in this video. But first, a review of today's numbers for the sixth time here in 2024. We hit 90 officially at the airport today, just before the showers and storms moved in. A 90 on the high side and a sultry 70 for the low this morning. Those dew points way up there today. It was a big change compared to the last couple of days. And we got some welcome raindrops in much of the area this afternoon. Now, some places got more than others, of course. I would say overall, the big winner was parts of Mahoning County, where we uh, picked up an inch or so worth of rain in some places. We'll do a few queries here, especially from about Canfield or Route 11, Austin Town to Canfield and West, back towards Ellsworth, Berlin, places like that. Uh, one inch amounts pretty common out there. Amounts elsewhere across the area were a little more modest, but considering it's gotten pretty dry of late, uh, we'll take any uh, raindrops that we had out there today, unless, of course, your outdoor activities or plans were uh, perilously affected <laughs> by the uh, raindrops this afternoon. All right, as of this recording at 7:11 uh, p.m., uh, the last of the raindrops are pushing through right now. now. There could be a renegade shower later on, but by far and away the wettest part of the evening is uh, wrapping up as of right now. And this band of showers and storms continues to push to the south and east. We've had some heavier storms down towards Interstate 70, Columbus over towards Zanesville. But nationally speaking, over the next several days, we will be watching a couple of big weather stories. Not necessarily much noteworthy here at home. But in the western U.S., it is going to turn exceptionally hot. There's going to be a ridge of high pressure that builds right over the west coast. And even in places where you expect it to be really hot, like Vegas and Palm Springs, places like that, um, it's going to be a real, real scorcher. Death Valley, California, can make a run at 130 degrees in this kind of pattern by the weekend and early next week. With a ridge situated here, it makes sense that downstream of that, you get a little bit of a trough across the middle of the country and some cooler than average weather for a time across the middle of the nation, not by a huge margin or anything, but a little bit cooler than the average. And then you got another ridge along the East Coast providing plenty of warmth from around our area on east as we go into next week. The other big national weather story is, of course, Hurricane Barrel, which is in the Caribbean, and it made landfall at least partially along the uh, island of Jamaica, today as a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, don't forget this was a Category 5 for a time, Monday night into Tuesday morning, but even as a Category 4, this is packing winds of 140 miles per hour sustained, gusts up to 165, and Barrow is still on track to make another landfall probably across the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico later this week. That's right around and just south of Cancun, and then probably another landfall in parts of eastern Mexico and perhaps southern Texas as we go into the latter portions of the holiday weekend and early on next week. And you know, this storm is unusual because of its strength this early in the season, but there's a reason why it was able to explosively develop. The water temperatures are amazingly warm, even by Caribbean standards. Of course, the water temperatures are supposed to be warm down here, but these readings are a little more typical of August and September rather than the beginning of July. So conditions were perfect for this storm to really ramp up in a hurry. And it was a bit of a record breaker in terms of intensity this early in the season. All right, back here at home. Now, if it were just a normal Thursday, we wouldn't spend a lot of time on this. But because it's the 4th of July, uh, our forecast is important on Thursday, and it is a tricky one. And the reason for that is a front, the same front that's going to squeak through tonight and was partially responsible for the showers and storms today. That front stalls somewhere across eastern Ohio, the panhandle of West Virginia, western PA, and because of its close proximity, we're not going to be able to guarantee a dry Thursday, even though in any one location, the chances of rain will be pretty low, but they're not going to be zero just about anywhere throughout our area. If I had to rank the areas that have the highest chance of wet weather on Thursday, it would be in our southern areas with lower chances to the north. Overall, the highest risk of showers and storms is probably down towards Interstate 70, Wheeling, Pittsburgh, over towards Columbus, Cambridge, places like that. But even north of that zone, I'm not going to be able to rule out a shower or a thunderstorm, especially as we get into the afternoon. A renegade shower or two tonight. Most of Thursday morning and midday should be okay. It's the afternoon that we're most concerned about passing showers and storms, perhaps dampening for a time someone's picnic or barbecue or party or anything else that you may be doing 
outside on the 4th of July. Temperatures will make their way into the seasonable 80s, not quite as oppressive as today. The dew points not quite as high as today, but still just about what you expect on the 4th of July. Now let's look at our model depiction here. And this particular run of this particular weather model says that a lot of us will see a shower and storm as early as early afternoon. Now, this idea is not shared amongst all the computer models. And, you know, we look at a lot of information when we make routine weather forecasts for the next couple of days and even in the longer range every day in every season. We look at just more than just one run of one computer model, but graphically speaking, so this doesn't get super complicated, I'm just gonna show you this, which indicates that, yeah, there could be a shower or a storm early to mid afternoon. Our front probably settles somewhere around Route 30 or just to the south, somewhere between say Route 30 and Interstate 70. And again, because of that close proximity, we're gonna allow for that chance of a shower and storm into tomorrow evening. I know there's a lot of Valley fireworks displays tomorrow evening. And again, I think a lot of us will be dry, but I'm not going to be able to guarantee that your specific location will stay dry in time for the uh, fireworks tomorrow evening. This uh, stationary front then starts lifting back northward as a warm front on Friday. And while a lot of the daylight hours on Friday may be okay, it's towards evening that we'll see increasing chances of showers and storms. Let me back up this animation to Friday evening, right around sunset. This may be when our rain chances peak very late afternoon or more so into the evening on Friday. This cold front then rolls through Friday night. I think we'll be dry from start to finish on Saturday. Mostly sunny sky to kick off Saturday. Some of these high clouds out here will start to filter back in as we get into the afternoon, but drier air will also filter in Saturday afternoon, leaving us with lower dew points. So the long weekend forecast, which we already talked a lot about tomorrow. Let's talk about Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday will be steamy. 87 degrees, the dew points start coming back up to 70 or so. Uh, it'll be kind of like it was today, maybe not quite as hot as today, but pretty close. Again, the last raindrop's probably Friday evening, and by Saturday and Sunday, the dew points, I would say, aren't going to be rock bottom. They're not going to be like they were earlier this week. But we'll notice a change by Saturday afternoon with the dew points coming down. Saturday afternoon and Sunday should be just fine. If you're hitting area lakes, if you're doing anything else involving the outdoors, smooth sailing for Saturday and Sunday. The forecast until then remains a little bit tricky. Now, usually the drought monitor comes out on Thursdays, but since tomorrow is a holiday, we got an update a day early, and there's not much of an update here locally. The uh, situation just about the same as last week, with parts of northern Ohio designated as in a uh, uh, moderate drought. In far northeast Ohio, around most of our television viewing area and into western PA, some of us are abnormally dry, some others pretty normal, but all of us could use some rain. I don't see this as you know turning into any sort of especially wet pattern anytime real soon. We'll be dry Saturday and Sunday, dry Monday. Our next chance for showers and storms will be on Tuesday of next week. That'll do it for me on this Wednesday evening's Weather for Weather Geeks. Hope you have a great night. If you'll be out of touch with uh, the weather and videos like this tomorrow, hope you have a great 4th of July. I'll be working tomorrow, so I'll be doing Weather for Weather Geeks tomorrow evening with an update on the weekend forecast, and we'll take some fresh looks at the longer range as well. Have a great rest of your Wednesday night, and again, happy 4th of July.